Hey guys, how's it going? It is Marketing Johnson back again. Today, I'm going to react to one of these renovation shows. You know, those really unrealistic renovation shows where they show you how to flip houses and and they make all this money, but in reality, they probably would have lost money. Well, that's what happened in this um, scenario. If they would have flipped this house, they actually would have lost money in the end. And I'm gonna point out why, and I'm gonna give you my perspective on it as someone who has bought two houses over the last year, uh, fixed them both up, and built a ton of equity in those houses. I've also been a licensed contractor for many years now, so, Let's get into it and let's roast this renovation show. Okay, so firstly, this is called Cosmetic Renovation. Um, it's a 10 day, Australian 10 day flip. So they're planning to flip this house in 10 days, which means renovate the entire thing and have it ready for sale in 10 days. Uh, I wouldn't, this is not the type of house you'd be flipping, but yeah, this is what they're trying to do. So it will be interesting to see what they come up with. 10 days is very, is not long at all if you want to flip a house, so I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see how they go on this one. Respect if they can do it in 10 days. You must be Louise. Hi, hi Cherise. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you too. Thank you. Thanks Give me for a, coming in. That's okay, give me a hug and a kiss. It's no the other thing to do. Yes, it, it is. First impressions, yeah. what a great house. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, look, it is. It's a great little home. Well, it's in its original it's condition, so. Yeah, well, you know yeah. what? The old girl has stood the test of time. Yes. You know, it looks like it's got great bone. First impressions are really good, but there's definitely a couple of issues that stand out to me. Corner block, I'm not so happy with, yeah. but we can't change that. It is what it is. The suburb is really... So a corner block, in my opinion, is something you want to hold on to for a long time. Uh, if she could rent this out and keep it positively cash flowing, uh, and so it's not really costing her anything each year, uh, honestly, I wouldn't even be trying to flip it. I'd be trying to hold it because that corner block is going to be worth a lot of money someday. You can subdivide it. There's a lot of things you can do with a corner block that you can't do uh, with your average block. So I don't know why she's complaining about the corner block. I guess maybe in this situation, but... Usually a corner block is a very good thing. Really nice. The only problem here is all the houses look the same. They do. Yes. So if you're thinking of selling, we need to make sure that your property looks a little bit different. Okay. So what I'd love to do is I'd love to see the inside yeah. and then we'll talk strategy. Excellent. All Perfect. Right. Okay, take me. Thanks. Louisa's home is a really good size with three bedrooms, one bathroom and an ensuite. She's got two separate living areas, an open plan kitchen, laundry and a toilet. So Cherie, this is my home. Wow, wow it's big. It is cool. Wow, that is a very pink house. Pink tiles, pink walls. My goodness. Quite big. This is the formal dining area. Or what? The formal, formal dining room that nobody in Australia that actually uses anymore. Exactly. I'm always looking for problems that have the potential to suck money out of my budget. Things like water damage that I don't know about. So far, I can't see any issues. This is the kitchen. So the kitchen's kitchen. tiled. Yep. Wow, it's big. Yeah. But okay, so this kitchen's very interesting. This is the type of house where it's not a complete rehab. You kind of want to do lipstick stuff to it. So you just want to fix, um, like you don't have to rip out wall, like you don't have to rip out all the gyp rock and replace, like rip out mold and all that sort of thing. So with this kitchen, what I would do straight away just by looking at it, this old curved uh, kitchen, I don't really think that looks very good. I would turn it into an L-shaped kitchen. So you just have the run against the wall and then you'd have the run going out into the open plan and you would have a breakfast bar on that and I would use all the original cupboard doors. Uh, to replace that island, I would actually take the same doors that are already on there, make new cupboards for it. You can get the kitchen, uh, the caboodle cabinets from like Bunnings and stuff, and you can cut them to the right size to suit the doors. Mm -hmm. And then I would just turn it into an L-shaped kitchen, replace the bench tops, repaint all the doors uh, to a, like a white, put black handles, and it would look like a brand new modern kitchen just from doing that. And you're probably going to spend, if you get stone bench tops, uh, you probably you'd be looking at under five grand to have a brand new kitchen with stone bench tops, new splashback, uh, brand new colours uh, like coloured doors and stuff, brand new handles. Everything's in the right locations. You got lots of bench space. Yes. Don't like this at all. This is dating your kitchen right now. This angled breakfast. 100% that's dating the kitchen. The whole angled thing, I don't think that's modern at all. Again, keep it in an L shape. Have a breakfast bar going over the top. So this is more so what I would be looking at doing here. I would turn that curved part into an 
like a literally an L shape like we have here and there would be a breakfast bar coming out and then the waterfall edge on the stone um, that always gives it a much higher end look so I'd be trying to take out that whole curved section and just make it straight like in this kitchen here and that's going to leave some holes in the tiles and the floors but I assume they're going to be putting new flooring in because those tiles are pink and ugly so that would cover that anyway spa yes and obviously all the cabinetry and the bench top everything's really old and dated appliances yeah, yeah. all look good yeah. that's a little bit old yes but all in all good kitchen a yep. little bit of money to drop here okay so your so, lounge room yeah so this is the main living area i like that it's open plan mm. but and yeah, buyers love that yeah you've got the old vertical drapes they're criminal yeah, i know i always say whoever invented vertical drapes they seriously should have been sent to yeah. jail yeah jesus they they look like a something off a glamping tent. It looks like they've got one of those glamping tents, you know, you see at festivals, and they've literally, I don't know, cut it with a chainsaw and then hung it from the window. They look ridiculous. They look so old fashioned. I hope they didn't come, I hope that's not her choice of, okay, well, anyways, yeah, if you would change those to roller blinds, um, they're cheap and look a lot better. They're criminal. <laughs> All right, so loving this space. Excellent. You, you open the front door, you transition through to that yeah. front. It is a nice open plan. Like it's open, you've got a feel and you can see people, you can talk to people in the kitchen while you're eating and stuff. Nice open plan feel. The formal dining room, kitchen, lounge room. So this is all making sense to me. The living areas are looking great. The bedrooms are too. They've got wardrobes, ducted air conditioning. So, so far, so good. Louise, what's this? That's awesome. It's got ducted air conditioning. It's only really lipstick stuff you need to do this house. Um, all the big expenses, like you know, ducted air conditioning, that sort of thing, it's it's already done for you. You don't have to really remove any big walls in the kitchen, any load-bearing walls. It's all already open plan. So it's just lipstick stuff that she really needs to do here. I don't think she needs to spend that much money at all. This room here? Yeah, this room here is the study. Which, study? Yeah. I'm hoping we could put a wall in here and close it in and make it a fourth bedroom. If we do that, that's going to cost less than $2,000, all said and done. We're going to have to change some of the electricals around and light switches, yep. but that is two grand well spent. That's a good move. Add an extra be extra bedroom if you can. Like, there's no, there's no reason not to. The only time it's a bad thing to do that is I see people, they try too hard. You know, they really try to make a bedroom out of nothing. Right here, this is like a sunroom or something, and those just don't even exist in new houses, so turning it into a bedroom is a great idea. And yeah, about $2,000 would probably be on the money, maybe even a little bit cheaper than that. It's only one wall you're putting up after wall, frame and gyp rock. Maybe you move a light switch, but they're already gonna have, you know, painters and stuff in there anyway. Excellent. All right, that's a done deal. Good. Adding a bedroom is a guaranteed way to add value. It helps with the appraisal as well, because all of a sudden, when the appraisers look at your house, they're not looking at three bedroom houses that are sold in your area, they're looking at four bedroom houses that are sold in your area. So that helps a lot, adding that bedroom for sure. Don't need the bathrooms to go. Fingers crossed, they're looking good. Toilet, big vanity, yep. nice mirror. Everything single condition. The tiles. I know. So yes. you've got two big bathrooms, a laundry and a separate toilet where all the floor tiles have got to be ripped up, re-waterproofed. That is 10 grand minimum for waterproofing, tiling. Yeah. Such a shame because up until this point. Okay. Again, I would not touch the tiles. Like, geez, guys. If you were to rip up all those tiles, you're not just ripping up the floor tiles, okay? You're jackhammering up the sand cement underneath them. You're re replacing all the waterproofing, which means the vanity, the bathtub, the shower screen, all that has to go. It all has to go to get all that out of there. Like, oh, don't even get me started on that. That's a lot of money they're putting into that. What I would do here, is you can get this epoxy stuff that goes over tiles and that it's kind of like painting the tiles but it's so it's very very strong it's like a two pack epoxy it's what they put on garage floors and stuff over the concrete you know you can have hot tires on it it's very very strong you get like a five year warranty i would make the the floor tiles like a dark gray and then everything else white this vanity here you would just paint this white or the same color as your kitchen 
put the same stone bench tops as you got in the kitchen on the uh, vanity here and then change the handles to black handles and I think you're pretty much done there. And yeah, you would save a ton of money. The glazing of this bathroom probably be about $500, uh, reglazing all the tiles different colors and then the vanity painting and then stone bench tops, maybe you're looking at, you know, another eight, $900. It was a relatively easy renovation. You like a challenge though, don't you, Sheree? <laughs> you know what I say, problems? Or eat them for breakfast. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> In our case, it might be breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> to fully renovate the inside, Louise needs to spend $40,000. We want to give her place a modern, neutral feel. And we can achieve that by adding timber flooring, clean white walls and soft, beautiful curtains. We'll also update her kitchen with a new colour scheme, doors and bench top. And in her bathrooms, we're going to keep things really simple and save some money by tile painting the wall tiles. But unfortunately the floor tiles will need to be replaced. Okay, I don't think they're going to be able to, that's just stupid. If they, if they rip up those floor tiles, they might as well replace the wall tiles at that point. Um, you can tile over tile, which I've seen done before. It actually works pretty well as long as you use a proper primer over the original tiles. So if they really need to replace the floor tiles, that's what I would do, tile over tile. You do get a little bit of a lip at the edge of the bathroom where it meets like the hallway and stuff, but most bathrooms have that anyway. You just finish that off nicely with a bit of aluminium trim. But yeah, I, I don't think they need to do that, but if that's what they wanna do, I would not rip up the tiles and have to replace all the waterproofing. That is a nightmare and it's gonna cost them a ton of money. I don't know where they're getting this 40 grand from. Um, for, for the inside of the house, like the bathrooms maybe spend $1,500 in each, that's three grand, spend no more than five grand on the kitchen, you know, that it's, it's only eight grand, you're adding that wall and you know, whatever goes on in that room uh, brings it maybe to 10 grand, you're repainting the entire interior of the house, even if that's $10,000, um, you're only at 20 grand there and then the flooring, I don't, know, I don't know what kind of flooring they're putting. You should put luxury vinyl plank flooring in. They've got some really great stuff at the moment. It just clips together, it's waterproof, it's scratch resistant, and it looks modern as. So it's just like a floating floor that would go over the top of the tiles. That's what I would do there. And you're only spending, you know, 15, no, no more than 20,000 on the inside of the house. You know, replace all the uh, door handles and hinges, of course, you know, matte black, give it a nice modern feel. But I don't know why they're spending 40 grand, like, obviously they don't know how to spend money. Louise agrees on the inside, but I'm not so confident she's going to agree with what I have to tell her next. The outside for me is the big problem child. Mm. Okay, I'm going to shock you now with what <laughs> I think you should do. You ready for it? Yeah. Would you agree your house looks like every other house in this street? Pretty much. It's a me too? Yes. It's never good to be me too. No. Always stand out. Okay. I think one of the biggest ways to make your home look like a brand new home is to completely cement render the whole house. Wow. Okay. That's... I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think that's an absolutely fantastic idea. That gives the house a completely different look. Okay. It's the only way you're going to get rid of the red brick. You can paint brick, but it doesn't yeah. look great. Yeah. That's that's the first part. The okay. second part, your roof is structurally in good nick. It's yeah. faded. Yeah. It's 17 years old. You need a roof spray. Yeah. So <laughs> I've got a third shock. Okay. Yep. I'd love to run a fence all the way down. Now that's normally a lot more than what I would ever recommend, but for you to be able to get the higher resale, I feel you need to do it. Okay, the running the fence down, I don't think they need to do that. If they're going to cement render the outside of the house, which I think they should do, um, you just cement render the red brick fence as well while they're there and then keep it the same colour as the house. Like that, that would be a great idea. I don't know why they need to rip that out and put a new fence in. That's just silly in my opinion. Uh, yeah, the rendering of the house is a no-brainer. Maybe you spend, you wouldn't spend more than 10 grand rendering that house. I rendered the front of my house, uh, the one I bought about a year ago, for $2,000, okay? And he said he would do the entire rest of the house for another five to $6,000. Now, my house has, it's two-story, okay? You need scaffolding to get up there, okay? 
just the, for the front of the house, the scaffold, scaffolding was $1,300. So they're not gonna need scaffolding on this house. So I can't imagine rendering this house would cost more than 10 grand. Rendering and painting combined would not cost more than 10 grand on the outside of this house. It's not that big. So I think that is a no brainer. They should definitely render the outside of the house. It would make it look completely different. I'll put up two photos of what my house used to look like before it was rendered and then what it looks like now that it's rendered. And you can see the difference here, okay? Massive difference, massive difference. And you see where the bricks sort of stick out on her house? Well, they can just be cut off and then rendered over the top of. So that's not something you need to worry about either. But the rendering, 100% do that, 100%. Oh, and the roof painting as well, that's a good idea. I think that, yeah, the roof painting always looks good. Especially because our roof is so pitched, it would look so much better painted. Maybe like a light gray on the outside of the house and then a dark, monument gray very dark gray on the roof i think just doing the inside alone we're really going to struggle okay. but ultimately it's your money louise yeah. you have to make the ultimate decision and i can't guarantee this investment yeah. that you're going to get it back i can't guarantee it's you know in property nothing is a done nothing deal done if it was deal. that easy everybody be doing it yeah yeah okay one of the keys to getting buyers emotionally connected with your property is great street appeal and for louise to really achieve that I'm proposing to get the house rendered with white cement render, spray her roof black, and to give it that extra piece of charm, a white picket fence. With her house currently valued at 720,000, and my golden rule of only spending 10. Okay, so this house is valued at 720,000. If you were to buy this to flip this, ideally, you would want to be buying something that you know, the bricks, like if you look at the house that I bought, the bricks were moldy, they were discolored, they were yucky. So I got it for a cheaper price, okay, and then rendered over the top of it. So there was no difference to me because I rented over the top of it. But she's got actually, her house is a really nice nick. So she didn't get, you wouldn't get anything off the price for the house being in good nick. And then you go and render over the top of it. It's costing you more money. So ideally, you'd want to find this house if you're going to render it, render it. You would want to find this exact same house but with really faded, yucky bricks and then you would want to try and get 50 grand or something off the price. You know, negotiate your profit into the deal, basically. Her budget has crept in at 75,000. Time is definitely money on renovations. So I've set a tight deadline on this project in 10 days. We better get cracking. 10 days is a stretch. If they could do it in 10 days, that is fantastic. This would take me at least at least a month and a half. Well, to do everything, the rendering, like kitchen, uh, it wouldn't be like a month and a half, a half of constant work, but it takes time to get quotes done for, you know, jitbrocking the house, book people in. Um, get, it's, it takes time to book all these people in, unless you overpay for labor. If you are overpaying for it, then yeah, you can get stuff done within a couple days, but then you're overpaying and that's not what you wanna do. You wanna create competition with your different trades. You wanna know how you save money on renovations, how you get stuff done so cheap? You project, manage your own renovations and you create competition for each thing that you get done. So for the kitchen, you get a couple of quotes in. Uh, you can use these like service seeking apps. So uh, you basically post the job that you have and then you get a whole bunch of different companies competing for your work, creates competition. And if you're project managing it yourself and you know a fair bit about renovating, um, then you can keep them to a high quality standard. You know what's expected w with the work that they do. So that's, that's how you save money in, in renovations. If you get a contractor in or a builder just to do it all for you, they're gonna take a big cut and they're not gonna be creating competition, they're just gonna be using their guys. And you spend a lot more money than you need to. And after telling Louise her budget needs to be 75,000, here comes my first curveball. Look, Cherie, that's probably stretching my budget a bit too far. Okay. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to stretch it that far, to be honest. All right, yeah. so how much ideally do you wanna spend? 50's fine, but yeah. 50 is more than enough to do everything that they said in there. 100% you could get that done for 50 grand, no doubt whatsoever in my mind. That's in Australia right now, in 2021, you could easily get that done for 50 grand. So she's in fairyland if she thinks that's gonna cost 75 grand. Maybe it's gonna cost 75 grand because she wants to do it in 10 days, okay? There's plenty of companies that if you call them up and say, yeah, uh, I want my stone bench tops tomorrow, they'll do it, but they'll do it at double the price that they would usually charge if 
you said, yeah, I want the stone, stone bench tops, and they're like, yeah, it's a 14 day turnaround. So maybe that's why they're spending so much money on this, but 75 grand is a lot of money for what they're, for a lipstick job, basically. Anyways. No more than that. Okay, so that's quite a big drop. Yeah. On a tighter budget, something's got to go. I'd be really happy to lose the picket fence, but my big thing is keeping that cement render. I know it'll transform that property like nothing else. Yes, keep the cement render. She's so right here. She is so right. Oh, that is going to make it look so much nicer than all the other houses around. You just think, all those little project homes look exactly the same. They're all that ugly red brick out of fashion. If she had a nice beautifully cement rendered smooth outside of the house. It would look like a mansion compared to the rest of those. It would be, oh, such a big All difference. Right. Yeah. It's 50 grand. You want to knock 25 off the budget. So what do you think you'd want to lose? The rendering. No. Coming up. Don't lose the rendering. That's what's going to set your house apart from the rest. Oh. If you don't do the rendering, your house is just a nice, modern project home, the same as the rest. You, the rendering is going to make a big difference. Don't lose the rendering, please. This isn't great news, but Louise needs the budget to go from $75,000 to just $50,000. Let's take off the cement render and lose the fence from the outside. We're going to keep the kitchen and bath. Don't lose the cement render. That is, That was such a good idea. Please don't lose the cement render. You can get it all done for 50 grand, maybe not in 10 days, but geez, don't have to pay, overpay for everything. Trim cabinets and only replace the bench top and doors. And the big win is I found a tile sprayer who can spray paint the walls and tiles in the bathrooms. That's gonna save us a fortune. Now it's time to get super organized. When you're cutting carpet, get yourself a sharp Stanley knife. Okay, so this is it. We're obviously... Um... The only room that hasn't got the tiles is in the formal room in the front there. Yep. If you left all the tiles, pack that area up and put the floating floor over the top. I reckon that's a brilliant idea. But that's a no-brainer. You don't need to rip up tiles to put a floating floor down. You just go straight over the top. That's the whole idea of a floating floor. Nice level surface, and then you can go over the top of it. It's, uh, yeah, and then it, when you do that, it actually lines up better with the lips at the bathroom. So, yeah, there's no need to rip out tiles to put down a floating floor. That is just, that's a waste of money, and you're, you're wasting money at this point. Pack it up where it needs it and go straight over the top. That's what floating floors are made for. Just make sure when you put a floating floor down, you rip up the uh, the skirting boards, the little trims down uh, at the bottom where the tiles meet the wall. Rip those up, tuck the, uh, the floating floor underneath those, put them back on, and it looks way better than putting that stupid little trim piece around all the edges, 100%. Well, that's one of the big things, is not, not just getting your tiles up. I'm gonna kiss you and you. <laughs> <laughs> Renovating can be stressful with constant problems that you have to deal with. And on day two, Louise is definitely starting to feel the pressure. I'm not prepared for the pace that we're moving at. It's going pretty quickly. Yeah, 10 days is insane. I don't know what they're thinking of doing this in 10 days for, but okay. Um, I guess they're overpaying for everything. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I just feel like I'm not not doing everything that I should be doing. We have to give him an answer in a couple of hours. Please! Okay. Yeah. At the moment, I run in and Cherie will just tell me, you've got to go do this, quick, go and do that. And I, I come back into the office, <laughs> basically, to go place orders. Let's skip that. Oh. Also, I'd put LED downlights in the budget, 100%. That would be a no-brainer. They don't cost very much. I think it's like 110 bucks for a pack of 10, and then you just get someone to install them. LED and downlights make the biggest difference in the world. I hope they're going with LED downlights. I haven't heard any mention of it yet, but if they don't, 
I'm just going to shake my head because that is that's somewhere where you can, especially because they're already repainting everything. <laughs> they might as well put in LED downlights. That is, that is where you get your money. Okay, number one, flooring down, perfect. The power of paint, it can't be underestimated. I feel like she's one of those supervisors on site that is meant to be like, <laughs> that feels like they're not doing enough. So they just walk around and they go, ah, oh, flooring, perfect. Yep, that's going in. Ah, oh, yes, uh, yep, you're measuring that wall. Good job. Uh, yes, okay, yep, you, you've you you've painted that. Excellent, needed that done. <laughs> and they just, they're like, well, I need, to, <laughs> I need to pass the time somehow. So I'll just go around <laughs> telling people exactly what they're doing. <laughs> That's what I feel like she's doing right now. Or maybe it's just for the camera, I don't know. It is liquid gold for renovators. And today we need to make some big decisions about color choices. So the painters are gonna- For color choices, I would just go to your local like um, display homes, new project homes. Uh, they've already had the designers in, they've already had the people that go through and you know make sure they've got all the modern colors and just base your place off of that, okay? Don't go bold, lights, always good um, base it off the new project homes the new display homes go to your local display home village you look where the builders show off their new homes and just base it your renovation exactly off those colors okay that's all you need to do i finished the ceilings today we really need to pick these colors today like okay. now because yep. we're going to have to go and get all of the paint this afternoon so that the painters aren't standing around doing nothing tomorrow okay uh, Sheree, I've got something to tell you. Okay. It doesn't sound good. I, it, it's well, scaring me. I, I, it probably isn't, but I've just spoken to the real estate agent yeah. and he's basically told me uh, that now's not a great time to sell uh, and what we were looking for in regards to price point, uh -huh. he doesn't think we're going to get there. Okay, so what does he think you can get for the property right now renovated? He's saying mid sevens to high sevens. A oh, disaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, that's not unexpected. If the house is valued at 720000 and it was already a pretty solid house, they're really not changing much except they're painting and they're doing a little bit of kitchen work. She's not going to render the outside of the house now, so it's going to look pretty much exactly the same from the outside. I'd expect, you know, high sevens for, for doing that kind of work. That's it. It's not like they're doing a whole lot of work to it. So I don't know what they're expecting more. At 720,000 with a 50 grand spend, the project's going to owe us 770,000. We are making no. Yeah, 770,000, and that's not including if you had a bought the house at 720,000 and then you paid 30,000 stamp duty. Now the house owes you 800,000 after your renovation, and then you've got holding costs. There's a whole bunch of stuff that these guys do not even <laughs> put in there. So they make it they sound so much simpler than it really is. So yeah, we'll see. No profit now. If I'm not gonna get the price point that we were expecting mm -hmm. when we first said, let's go ahead and sell, I'm actually concerned as to whether, I, I'm starting to think whether I should sell. I'm starting to think maybe I need to hold. Well, if she wasn't going to sell, all she needed to do was paint the inside and that's it, pretty much, to rent it. And in, in this situation, I would only rent it if it's cash flow positive, which means the rent is enough to cover all the expenses on the property. And then at that, in that case, it's not costing you any money and you can pull out the equity and buy another house if that's what you want to do. So if... Yeah, if, if it's cash flow positive for her, I'll keep it as a rental, it's a corner block. In a while, it's gonna be worth a lot of money. You're gonna be able to subdivide that, you're gonna be able to put two houses on there, sell them separately. There's a lot of potential with a corner block. But if it's, if it's a liability basically, so if she rents it out and it's gonna cost her more money um, to keep the property than she's getting for rent, and it's, it's costing her each year, then sell it. Get, get your money and get out, get into something that's a better investment. Property. Coming up on renovating. For this profit. is not called land and houses. Yeah. This is called your enemy. You're just going to have to stay here and do all of that stuff yourself tonight. Well, no, it's not going to get done. Just on my own. Panic. Yeah. But I think in the meantime, knowing that that could come, we need to now work out. Okay, where can we save money even more? Yeah. There you go. 
So if you do this, it'll save you thousands of dollars. You might spend a couple of thousand dollars as opposed to 10 or 20,000 replacing a whole new kitchen. Yeah, see, that's very smart. If, if you can, I would just spray the doors, reshape the kitchen and replace the bench tops. I don't think you need a new kitchen there. Definitely not. You can save so much money, just lipstick. And again, it's not dodgy work, okay? You can get these doors professionally sprayed, like if they had come out, you know, as a poly kitchen to begin with. So it's not dodgy work at all, okay? It's just a way of saving money and, and keeping the old stuff and, and just turn, making it look new. It's what the agent said about the kitchen that's really got me worried. So I spoke to the real estate agent and he thought having a stone bench top in the kitchen would just be a real, like, massive selling factor. Yeah. He doesn't think, it, it might not get us more money. At that price point, they're wanting eight, 800 something, they want over 800,000 for it. 100% I would put stone bench tops in, that, that's like a no brainer. At that price point. For a rental, nah. -uh. But they're trying to flip it, yeah, put stone bench tops in. And again, if they had done with the kitchen what I originally said, where they just turn it into an L shape with a nice big breakfast bar, a, a nice big uh, island coming off, breakfast bar, like I showed in that picture, they would be saving money on stone. All these curves, this weird shaped stone bench top they want to do, that costs a lot of money. So they would have saved money on the stone and the kitchen would have looked more modern. Poor, poor choice in how they've decided to keep the kitchen, in my opinion. In, in terms of resale value, but it, what he's saying is that buyers are going to expect a stone bench top in yep. here and he's, he just thinks it's going to attract more buyers. Sama, do you think these two trees should stay or go? Stay. I think they should go. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> Old mate's like, yeah, I think they should stay. I, I don't want to have to rip them out. <laughs> Please don't make me do any more work here. I want to go. <laughs> When's this 10 days going to be over? I want to get out of here. <laughs> That's what he's thinking right now. <laughs> the other guy's just like, he's probably the boss. He's like, yeah, we can rip those out for you. Yeah, it'll be an extra uh, 10 grand. Yeah, if you want it done in two days. Yeah, oh, we, we charge double when it's when you want it done this fast. So yeah, they can go if you want. We'll charge whatever you want. We'll charge you, to, we'll charge you how much money you got. We'll, we'll charge it. That's what he's thinking. <laughs> I love my tradies. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. <laughs> I love my tradies when they're competing for the work and they're doing good prices. Salmon, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> Is that his name, Salmon? <laughs> He's obviously the lazy one who doesn't want to do any more work. <laughs> He's not getting paid the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see that? Right there, see that house? That's rendered, that's spin cement rendered. And you can tell how much better that would look than those ugly red brick houses. Look at the, look at the house right next to it. See this house here, right next to it? Ugly sort of brick, or right here, ugly sort of brick, and that's been completely cement rendered. That looks so much better. That That is where the money is, I reckon. I think they've made a big mistake by not cement rendering the outside of the house. You know, that's a big mistake. To sell a property, you need two things, a good agent and an even better property stylist. The outcome of your styling will be as good as your brief. So let's go through on a room by room basis so you can learn how to do it. Okay. Engaging the... When it comes to property styling, I'm all for it. I think that's a great idea. It gives people good perspective of like furniture sizes and how things all fit together. Bedrooms always look so much smaller when they don't have a bed in them. So I think that's a good idea to get it furnished and styled um, before they sell it. I've never actually had to do that because all my properties I keep, uh, I don't sell. There's just too many costs involved with selling. So I buy, renovate, build equity, and then keep them. Don't, I don't need to sell, I don't wanna sell. I'm not trying to make a quick profit, I'm trying to build wealth. And obviously I keep them uh, cash flow positive so they're not costing me any money. But yeah, I, I think styling is a good idea. I'm not sure how much it would cost, probably about $5,000 I'd say, to do a house, to put all the furniture in and, and stage it. But I think that's money well spent. Property stylist early means you give them time to get all their pieces together that they need to make your home look at furniture and function of the space. This is not called land and houses. Yeah. This is called your enemy. You're just gonna have to stay here and do all of that stuff for yourself tonight. Well, no, it's not gonna get done. Just on my own. 
you want to knock 20 grand off the budget. Pretty much. Quality houses at affordable prices by turning huge lots of vacant land into sprawling suburbs. But if supply outweighs demand, then resale values can really take a huge You've hit. You've got to make a decision whether you're selling or renting. For yeah. me, you've already got fantastic capital growth. So I don't like these new project homes where you're sitting on like a 200 square meter block, these tiny little blocks, they're all house, your backyard is about the same size as your bathtub. And there's literally like, <laughs> all I'll say is they only sell for good prices because they're all new and they look nice on the inside. But say the same, same house, same new project home on a 200 square meter block that sells for 800,000 now, um, compared to a house that's in so on a bit of land that's an older house that sells for eight hundred thousand, um, you know that's not very modern, but it's got it's maybe a thousand square meter block or something that could be subdivided in the future. In twenty years, uh, those two houses are going to go up in value most likely. But I tell you what, the one with the more land is going to go up in value a hell of a lot faster than the project home that's you know going to be. It, it, you're buying house, that's all you're buying, it's house. You're on this tiny little block. There's not much you could do with a small block like that. So you're buying the house and houses depreciate and land appreciates. You're manufacturing that last chunk of equity in the property in the renovation. Yeah. All of this going around you will yeah. continue to pull your price down. It's not gonna appreciate. Another reason to cement render the house and make it stand out from all the others. I don't know why they didn't do that, but again, that's such a big mistake. I think you make a pretty valid point, but if I, if I held onto this house, I'd just be parking my money. Exactly right. It's in the project plan for a construction clean. That's where you get a team of cleaners in right at the very end of your renovation, before the styling comes in, to make your property spick and span. Because we're a little over budget, Louise has cut it out. So now I'm the cleaning lady as well. $300, damn. I tell you what, I've tried to clean stuff myself and I suck at it. Get professional cleaners in. <laughs> They're well worth the money. They do a hell of a lot more than I can do, that's for sure. Our house, yeah. we've got to sweep the floors, yeah. we've got to mop the Like, it's not going to get done, just on my own. Yeah. So, yeah. In renovations, there can be moments where your renovation gets really overwhelming. And for Louise, that moment is now. There's a lot of work to be done and there's no money in the budget to bring extra labour. So for Louise, she has a long night ahead. There's only so much you can do with the hours that you've got in the day. Fortunately, that's true. There is only so much you can do. You can work 24-7, but you can only do so much. I don't know where all the money got spent on this, but... Uh, <laughs> Clearly got spent somewhere because they seem to be, yeah, they've overspent on this and they haven't got that much done in my opinion. Throughout the living space, timber floors and white walls give it a sense of space, while the feature wallpaper adds that extra layer of dimension. We saved a lot of money by tile spraying the floor and wall tiles. And like the kitchen, we only replaced the doors and bench tops. Wow, that looks so much better. So they actually did end up going with that epoxy thing that I said in the beginning. So that's really that's really good. That has made such a big difference. They sprayed it like a, a grayish brown. On, that looks awesome, honestly. That has made such a big difference. That looks like they re actually replaced the vanity though. I said just to paint the vanity, but you know, I think that actually looks quite good and vanities aren't that expensive. So uh, I quite like that actually. They've replaced the vanity, it looks really good. They've done a great job on that bathroom. That looks awesome. Just the reglazing, looks fantastic. Yeah, I, I think that was a great decision rather than jack jackhammering up all the floor. And, and that's another thing too. If they didn't do that, I don't understand where they spent the money because all they did was reglaze that. That's five hundred dollars to reglaze that. So, add the new fittings, and these rooms really come alive.
Each of the bedrooms has got new carpet, curtains and a feature wall. We also transport... See, I think you've got to be a little bit careful with these feature walls. You know, you get people that really love them and then really don't love them, or they just don't love that certain feature wall that you did. I think it's better just to keep it neutral, keep it um, all the same, and then people can come in and do their own feature walls. That's part of the exciting thing about owning your new, buying your first home or your, your new house. You want that weekend job where you put the wallpaper up in your room or you paint one wall like a darker color. I don't think they should have done that. I think these kind of shows, they get a little bit too carried away on what they want specifically and not what the broad market wants. So I don't think they should have done any feature walls. I think they should have just left that for the people that are, are buying it. From the office to a fourth bedroom. Louisa's final renovation budget came in at 58,000, all said and done for materials and trade labor. That means her break even point is 778,000. Now it's time to get the real estate agency in to think what they can do. See, it looks great on the inside, but the outside just looks exactly, well, it looks a little bit different. Mind you, the roof looks good. The, they've repainted, you know, eaves and a little bit of the bricks, but that cement red, render would have just, ooh, ooh. Damn, I would want to buy that house. You know, the cement render just makes it look so much better. With the property and its resale value. Especially if they did the fence too, that would look awesome. Cement rendering the house. And that fence that goes all the way around, oh, that would look so good. That I should have spent money there. Oh, wow, look at this. Yep, they've nailed it. Kitchen? Love it. So much natural light, it's just beautiful. Inside does look super good. But again, with that kitchen, again, L shape here, with a nice overhang on the bench top, and then a waterfall edge here going down. I think that would have made the kitchen look way more modern. I don't know why they didn't do that. They should have done that. What do you think the buyers will think? They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. Yep. They're gonna be blown away just like us. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. sold, sold, yeah. sold. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yep. Look what you've done with the floors. Yeah, they're great. They've been professionally reglazed, the floor yeah. and wall tiles, rather than ripping them all out. Whoever buys this doesn't have a cent to spend. Yes. Mm. All being done for them. Yep. I agree. What do you think? You actually make me want to buy it. It's you lovely. Want to buy it? It's lovely. You know, you if I was buying a house at that price point to live in for a long time, I would want a cement renderer. I would want it to stand out. But I know I've said this a thousand times, that was a big mistake they didn't do that. I would want that. I would be looking for that house that's been cement rendered. You've done everything right as a renovator when the real estate agent says, I want to buy your house. That's a good sign. Are you pressure, in the market? Pressure, 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 pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that you've seen it, where do you think the money's sitting at? Fully finished. I am still feeling on the market price range $7.99 to $8.49. If we do have the right combination of a couple of buyers fighting it out to yep. the end, mm -hmm. there's nothing to say it couldn't get to the top or even break through the top. I think it's really achievable and I can see my agent for a short period of time. Okay. Hey. Hey, how are you? Hi. Nervous for Louise, my heart. Yes, yeah. yes, yep. Um, so I really do feel that what I have in this envelope, that we have knocked it out of the park oh, based on the current You're going to need some of it. So it looks like they've sold the house and this is uh, where they find out how much they've got for it or they find out the highest offer or something. Without any further ado. Yeah. Oh. This is not how real estate agents give you your highest offer. Usually they call you and say, oh, we've been offered this much. Uh, you want me to accept it? Or they give you this fancy letter and go and sit down with you and build it all up. Drum roll in the background. <laughs> Three. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> Three. Three. Eight hundred and twenty-six thousand. That is awesome. Oh, good work, guys. Oh. That's not bad, considering they didn't do the outside of the house and stuff. But again, I don't know this market. I don't know what's expected here. But yeah, I think they could have pressed for a lot more if they if they got the outside of the house. You'd just bring a whole new level of buyer if you really made that house look different. Amazing. Well, yeah. That is absolutely brilliant. You happy? Yes. Yes, I am.
so happy that we, we got 826,000, which is awesome. We walked into this thinking if we can walk out with 820 and above, we're doing great. Therese told me that's $46,000 profit in 10 days, which is unreal. Okay, this is where it starts to get a bit crazy. $46,000 profit. Let's, let's do some calculations here, because that, that doesn't sound right. So, the real numbers, not the TV numbers, the real numbers. If they were to flip this house in 10 days, okay, they sold it for, let's get this, they sold it for 826000 Okay, you've got to minus off the real estate commissions. So we'll minus 2%. That's pretty reasonable. Okay, so we're down to 809000 Now, they spent a little over $50,000 on the renovations. So they spent about $60,000 on the renovations, we're going to assume, because that's what the profit they said in there. Um, all right, so we're going to minus 60 thousand okay we're down to 749 now we're going to minus the original price that they paid for it well or what it was worth seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars so minus seven hundred and twenty thousand okay they're not looking good they're down to twenty nine thousand dollars but then there's something in australia called stamp duty and it is a Bitch. I don't like stamp duty at all. Australian government wants their cut. They want their cut. You don't have this over in America, but you have this in Australia. This is the taxes they charge whenever you buy or sell a property. Uh, so the buyer has to pay stamp duty. So she, well, they would have had to pay stamp duty on the $720,000 when they originally bought the house. Okay? So stamp duty on $720,000 is about $32,000, dollars All right? So we'll go... Um, Minus $32,000. All right, so right now they're at minus $2,520. So they didn't make any money on this flip. Now then, we've got to talk about holding costs and financing. So if they were actually flipping this house in 10 days, they would have had to go through a private money lender or a hard money loan or something. And I don't deal with them very much because my I don't flip houses. I am planning on flipping one this year. So that's gonna be interesting and I will learn a lot more about it then. But I buy houses, fix them up, uh, build equity, and I don't sell them, I rent them out. So, at a guess, I would say about, you'd have to say at least $10,000 in holding costs and, and financing. Like that would be very conservative. Um, so, so, They've lost $12,520 on this property. So on TV, they made forty-six grand. In real life, if you were to do this in the same way that they have done it, you would have lost $12,520 and you would have busted your ass for a month or so and been stressed out and worked to lose money in the end. So let's talk about how they could have fixed this. For one, I think rendering the outside of the house would have gotten them an extra $30,000 at least. You would get some people that were just so attached to the house because it looks so much better and different to everywhere else in the neighborhood, they would they would go crazy with the office. We don't know this for sure, but I think the, the rendering of the outside of the house would have made a, a tremendous difference. Okay, so that probably would have added 20 grand to it. At least, you would have to think at least. The kitchen, I think the kitchen, I don't know what that, where they spent money on the kitchen because the kitchen looked exactly the same. All they did was take off that little breakfast bar. They should have changed the shape of the kitchen to a nice L shape and then they should have had a nice breakfast bar and a waterfall edge on the stone there. I think what they did with the bathrooms was fantastic. Um, I think they just overspent on this project really. I think, I'm not sure who did the work for them but a big way to save money in projects like this is project manage it yourself. You need to know some stuff about renovation so you can hold your contractors and the people doing work on your property accountable and, and you need to overlook their work, make sure they're doing what they should be doing. 
there's a lot of times, you know, uh, jip rockers will come in, throw up, you know, throw up the walls, do the jip rocking, and then they won't sand it properly, and you've really got to be on top of them. Creating competition, getting multiple quotes, of course you can't do this in 10 days, but if you had a month and a half, then yeah, you would be able to create competition, get the best prices, get it booked in, and have it running smoothly like that. I think they've overpaid because they've got it done in 10 days, and they've absolutely gone crazy offering whatever money they have to to get the stone bench tops done in one day. I've never heard of that being done before in one day. That's crazy. Usually for stone, it's, you know, after, after the measurement, after the check measure, it's at about seven to 10 day turnaround before you actually get the stone. So I think that's why they overspent because they got it done so fast. So that's my take on it guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. This might've been a bit of a long one. And I don't know, did you find value out of this? This is just my perspective on these <laughs> shows, these completely unrealistic shows that they have on. And you know, take, take it as you will. And thanks again for watching. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more stuff like this. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch us in the next one.